We've discussed potential energy a little bit. Now I'd like to present the other major category of energy, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of moving objects, whereas potential energy was the energy of interaction between objects. So let's first start by thinking of a scenario when you are accelerating an object. We can accelerate it from 0 to 10 meters per second, and then we can accelerate it again from 10 to 20 meters per second. Which way requires more work? It turns out that it takes much more work, three times as much work, to accelerate from 10 to 20 as from 0 to 10. An easy way to think about that is that going from 0 to 10 and 10 to 20 require the same amount of time if you're using the same force. However, recall that work is the force along a distance. In the same time, the object moves a lot farther when it's going from 10 to 20 meters per second than it is when it's going from 0 to 10. In fact, going from 0 to 10, the average velocity is 5 meters per second. Going from 10 to 20, the average velocity is 15 meters per second. That's a threefold difference, and indeed it takes three times as much work to accelerate from 10 to 20 as it does from 0 to 10. So again, it takes work to speed something up. You have to apply a force in the direction that the object is moving to speed it up. Now I'm going to derive exactly what the formula is for the work required to bring an object up to speed. We're going to conceptually start with the object at rest, bring it up to some speed v, and figure out how much work that must take. It's simplest if we analyze the case where we're using a constant force. It turns out that the, it turns out that the formula we're going to get is going to be applicable for all situations, but this is how we're going to obtain it. So start with a velocity versus time graph. It's the velocity time graph has a constant slope. It's a constant acceleration, therefore a constant net force. I've marked off the time that it takes to reach speed v from zero. The slope of the line is the acceleration. By Newton's second law, we know that the acceleration is the net force divided by the mass. By the definition of acceleration, we know that it's the change in velocity divided by the change in time. In this particular case, that's v over t. The area under this graph is the distance traveled. Now we'll figure out what the work is. The work, recall, is the dot product of the force and the displacement. The force is mass times the acceleration by Newton's second law. The slope is v over t, so the force we can say is mv over t. The displacement, of course, is the area under that triangle. That triangle is half of a rectangle with side v and side t. So the rectangle has area vt, the triangle therefore has area one-half vt. We multiply those two together, the force times the displacement, to get the work. So that's one-half vt times mv over t. The t's cancel, the v's do not, the v's reinforce, and we're left with one-half mv squared. Here we get another view of why it takes much more work to accelerate an object from 10 to 20 meters per second than it does from 0 to 10, because that speed factor is squared. There's a much bigger change going from 10 squared to 20 squared than there is going from 0 squared to 10 squared. Now that we've developed the formula for the work required to accelerate an object, we can just use that same formula to say that it's the kinetic energy, the energy of motion of the object, in a quite analogous fashion to saying that the potential energy was equivalent to the work it required to change the position of an object. Conceptually, we can think of the kinetic energy as being the work required to bring a motionless object, an object initially at rest, up to speed, which is 1 half mv squared. We can generalize this to say that the amount of work done to change the speed of an object changes its kinetic energy. If a network W is done on a system, the system's kinetic energy will change by that same amount W. So if the network done is positive, K, the kinetic energy, increases. If the network done is negative, the kinetic energy decreases. So what does it mean to do a positive amount of work? That means that the force is pushing in the same direction that the object is moving. That's to speed up the object. If the work done is negative, that means that the force is pushing opposite the direction that the object is moving. That's going to slow it down. Slowing it down decreases v, which makes 1 half mv squared a smaller value. It's not true, however, that work is done any time there is a net force on an object. This net force has to have a component in the direction that the object is traveling. There is a net force any time that a body accelerates. Net work is only done if the body is changing speed. What would be a case when an object is accelerating but not changing speed? When it's changing velocity, direction, but not the speed. 
for instance, uniform circular motion, or any case when an object is moving in a curved path at a constant speed. In that case, the object is accelerating, its velocity is changing, but no work is being done. There's no speed change, and the object's kinetic energy is not changing. So this net force that happens has to overlap with the displacement for any work to be done. If it overlaps positively, if the net force is in the same direction as the displacement, kinetic energy will increase. If it overlaps negatively, the kinetic energy change is negative.